You know, when it comes to cartoon channels, I don't think you can really get any weirder than Nickelodeon. Not in terms of actual content, I still think Cartoon Network takes that by a wide margin, but more so in the way they handle their content. To be frank, they're a disaster at handling their shows. So, let's take a look at one. Hello everyone and welcome back to The Void Theater. As always, I'm your ghostly host, Alexander Shade. So, yeah, Nickelodeon is weird when it comes to its shows. Between terrible time placements for shows that should have been easy money like Korra, or making asinine decisions like choosing Fanboy and Chum Chum over Adventure Time, a decision that I'm sure will haunt them until the heat death of the universe and maybe even beyond, it's safe to see that their business strategy is not always on point. But despite the numerous mistakes that both shows went through, you could at least argue that they were treated with some level of respect. Not as much as they deserved, but I digress. The point is they were at least treated somewhat decently. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for today's video topic, Harvey Beaks. So really quickly for the uninitiated, Harvey Beaks is a Nickelodeon cartoon made by C.H. Greenblatt, the same man behind one of the more recently famous cartoons on Cartoon Network, Chowder. It follows the adventures of Harvey Beak and his friends Fee and Foo as they go on childlike adventures. The series aired for about a year before being abruptly moved to Nickelodeon's second channel, Nicktoons, before being abruptly cancelled. Okay, so obviously the video is about Harvey Beaks, but why bring up Craig of the Creek? Well, it's because Craig of the Creek and Harvey Beaks share a distinctly odd number of similarities between themselves. Both feature a trio of characters having childlike adventures in their neighborhoods, and both were the creations of animators who worked on insanely famous projects before starting this one. However, there is one major difference. Harvey Beaks only ran for around a year and two seasons, whereas Craig of the Creek is currently running through its fourth season with both a spinoff and a movie currently in production. Which actually brings me to the point of this video. What the hell happened to Harvey Beaks for it to die off so quickly? And I actually have some thoughts about that. So without further ado, let's put these shows on stage and see how Craig of the Creek succeeded where Harvey Beaks failed. Alright, so I guess a good place to start with would be the very beginning, the Cartoon Network Renaissance, or more specifically, a few years before that. So real quick, let's talk about Flapjack and Chowder. Now, I know this seems random, but I promise you there's a reason for it. So anyway, Chowder premiered in the late 2007s with Flapjack falling shortly behind. Now, while Chowder was what really helped put Greenblatt on the map for his own unique style, it was Flapjack that led to both Pendleton Ward and J.G. Quintel having the pull to make Adventure Time and Regular Show respectively. And Adventure Time is what I really want to focus on here. I promise, this all really ties into Craig of the Creek, so just bear with me for a while. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that Adventure Time not only helped get a lot of these shows made, it also helped connect them in a weird animation daisy chain sort of fashion. Think of it like a Netflix recommendation tab or your friend recommending you anime. Oh, you like Adventure Time episodes that feature Marceline and singing? Well, you'd probably like Steven Universe then for the same reasons. And if you enjoyed that art style and slice of life aspect, you should probably check out Craig of the Creek. Now, that's not to say that Craig of the Creek is only popular because it was connected to those shows. Honestly, now that I've finally taken the time to watch it, I think it would have been successful even without it. It is a really well-written show with a lot of heart that stands out in its own unique way, but that is another video for another time. The point I'm trying to make is that I think it was easier for the show to reach a much larger audience due to the fact that a lot of people working on the show had pre-established hits already under their name. Unfortunately, the same just couldn't be said for Harvey Beaks. Now again, this isn't meant to be a jab at the show. Harvey Beaks is a fantastic show, and if you enjoy the style and humor of Craig of the Creek, please give it a try. But it is worth noting that Harvey Beaks was not only on a completely different channel at the time, but also that C.H. Greenblatt didn't have the same number of predecessor shows that people could connect Harvey to. The most obvious one he had was Chowder, and while the shows do share some obvious similarities in terms of art style, they're vastly different in terms of humor. Chowder was more surreal, while Harvey is a lot like Craig of the Creek in that slice-of-life, childhood humor aspect. So even if you wanted to recommend the show to someone who was a fan of Chowder, you better hope that they didn't go into the show expecting the same style of comedy, or they're just going to end up extremely disappointed. Again, that's not to say that Harvey Beaks wasn't funny, just that the shows were aiming for a very different style of comedy, and they could have come off as contradictory to each other. But now that we've talked about shows, let's talk about networks, and with that, advertising. Nickelodeon's terrible at it. Just a reminder that this happened. Someone thought that this was the best way to advertise this show, and they genuinely believe that. But it does highlight the point I'm trying to make. When it comes to advertising, Nick has more often than not been rather odd with what they choose to focus on. Sometimes it makes sense like when an avatar is running and any time there was an advertisement, you can almost guarantee that you would see something related to it at some point on the channel. And then other times you'd end up having fanboy and chum chum shoved down your throat. So with that in mind, you would think that they would be able to recognize when a show had some solid potential and would plan accordingly. I mean, they don't, but it's fun to play pretend, isn't it? Yet, unfortunately, Harvey ended up in the same place that The Legend of Korra did when it came to Nick's advertising. Sometimes they were the golden child, and other times they were just the red-headed stepson trying to get some attention from dad. And that's a serious problem when you need the show to get some much-needed attention. It feels counterintuitive to bury the show where no one can see it. Yet, on the other end of the spectrum, take a look at Craig of the Creek. And just for a look behind the curtains here, before writing the script, I had never seen Craig of the Creek before. 
and yet I could have told you half the names of the main cast of the show. That's how widespread the advertising for this show was. And not just Craig, every recent cartoon has gotten this same star-studded treatment, with the exception of some very criminally underrated cartoons, but again, that's a video for later, and we're in the now now. The point here is that even though Craig of the Creek all but had a guaranteed audience by way of proxy to Steven Universe and Adventure Time, Cartoon Network still treated it like it was coming from creators who hadn't just spent the last 10 or so years working on two of their biggest cartoons to date. And just for another behind the scenes peek, for comparison, I had cable when Harvey Beast came out. I genuinely can't remember if I ever saw a commercial for the show outside of tiny bumpers they have telling you what's coming up next. I'm sure Nick did attempt to advertise Harvey Beast in some way or shape or form, but if they did, it felt like it was far and few in between. Whereas by the time Craig the Creek had came out, I already moved on from cable and was still able to keep up with news on the show. They told you when the show was coming out, when the next season started, when there would be a new week of episodes, and then on top of that, they encourage you to follow the show online at Twitter and YouTube. It's such a drastic difference, and it's mainly due to the fact that Nickelodeon has always been a step behind both Disney and Cartoon Network when it comes to advertising. And honestly, just general things that both Disney and Cartoon Network have considered crucial to their channels. Speaking of things that are now crucial to basic commercial channels, let's talk about streaming services. And if I can just get a little real for a minute, what's the point of Paramount Plus? Like, just in a general sense. At least with Disney Plus, I get the core concept behind it. It gives you access to like 99% of all Disney properties with the exclusion of some really odd choices. And Cartoon Network doesn't really own HBO Max so much as it just rents a huge chunk of space from them. Plus you get all the new releases from Warner Bros. Paramount Plus, it's just there. There's no real reason for it to exist. It's just silently sitting there in the corner waiting for someone to care. But it's far too late for anyone to bother. But what does that have to do with Harry Beaks? Well, see, the issue with being late to the party is that there's a chance the party is already wrapping up. And by the time Paramount Plus rolled around and got all the Nickelodeon shows, most people had already settled into the services they already wanted and weren't exactly looking to find a new one. So even if you wanted to watch the show, it involved either getting a new subscription service, pirating it, or hoping that the show would air again on cable when you happened to be watching, if you still had cable. If not, well, then you're back to pirating the show or paying for Paramount Plus. So, one you have one option to watch this show. But when it comes to Craig of the Creek, you have HBO Max, and I don't think it's unfair to assume that most people are actually subscribed to HBO Max, unlike Paramount Plus, considering the numbers. So on top of its already solid fan base, it had the opportunity to expand into a newer audience that might have already missed the show. And Cartoon Network took advantage of that, considering that even now, going into the CN section of HBO Max, you'll see Craig of the Creek standing next to the likes of Dexter's Lab, Scooby-Doo, and Teen Titans on the Feature tab, only getting his own dedicated section just below it. It pretty much guarantees that if you didn't know about the show before getting HBO Max, you were going to know about it one way or another. It was never a matter of if, just when you would learn about it. So with all that being said, why did Harvey Beaks fail? Well, if I'm being honest, it was just piss poor management. Look, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say that Harvey Beaks could have been the best cartoon ever made, but it was a solid show that never really got a chance to shine because the network it was on was just weird with how it handled its shows. Shows like Harvey Beaks and Legend of Korra should have been easy money. Both were shows coming shortly after some of the creator's biggest successes, and in Harvey Beaks' case, one of the main reasons that Cartoon Network was able to stay afloat for so long. This shouldn't have been hard to make either of these shows a success. And yet, due to poor advertising and scheduling so bad, even the creator himself didn't know when the final episodes were going to air, the show was dead in the water before he even got the chance to swim. Again, I don't think Harvey Beast could have ever been as groundbreaking as its predecessor, but it's hard to not feel a bit of sympathy for the show when you can look at another show that falls in that similar vein and notice the changes that, that caused one to rise to success. Again, I believe that Craig of the Creek would have been successful on its own, it would have definitely found an audience regardless, but Cartoon Network definitely helped with proper advertising and scheduling and encouraging the fanbase to keep up with the shows themselves, the same way they did with Adventure Time and Steven Universe. It's a surefire way to, to ensure that the show drills itself into the audience's brain and stays there. Now, if only we could get some of that love for Mao Mao. Please, just something. The show deserves so much better than what it's getting. Anyway, with that, we come to the conclusion of this Void Theater script read of Harvey Beaks and Craig of the Creek. I know this sort of turned into a mini rant of Nick's terrible business practices, but the truth is that when it comes to comparing shows like this, you have to consider every aspect of them. And this is one of the rare times that I think both shows are equal. And considering that they both are currently sitting at a 7.2 score on IMDb with similar amounts of reviews, I would say that most people do as well. Also, I just find it fun to take a peek at the companies behind the cartoons since they play just as big a part in the success of the show as the show itself does. But as always, with the curtain closing, let me leave you with some questions. Out of the two shows, which do you prefer? And do you think that Harvey Beaks would have been more successful in a different network? Leave your answers in the comments down below, and while you're there, be sure to like the video and subscribe for more content on the way. 
and be sure to check out the channel for some more content similar to stuff like this. Until next time, I've been your host Alexander Shade, and I hope to see you back in my theater.